Today we're doing something questionable and is probably putting me on the goblin watch list. Remember the head of that goblin we 3D modeled? Yeah, this one. The one that already looks like it steals copper and screams at squirrels. <laughs> Well, today we're turning that 3D model into a 3D mold, and we're going to cast it with Dragon Skin 10. Now, this is the first time I've ever cast a 3D printed mold, so let's see how this goes. <laughs> Welcome back to Maker Build It. If this is your first time here and you're new to 3D printing or 3D modeling, welcome to the community. I am Brian DeLuca. And today we're taking the Goblin we 3D modeled and going full creature shop minus the Hollywood budget and a suspicious amount of coffee. If this works, we're going to have a Goblin mask. If not, we're probably going to have some weird piece of modern art. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to take your 3D model and make your 3D mold. Let's open up Nomad Sculpt and I'll show you how to do that real quick, but you can do this in any 3D modeling application that you have. Okay, so let's open up Nomad Sculpt. What we're gonna do is we're gonna delete our sphere and add a box. Once we add that box, we wanna make this big enough to fit our mask in. So we're going to make this one pretty much the size of our bed, 256 by 256. So we're gonna make it 128 millimeters tall, which is your Z axis on your printer. Now we're just gonna import our goblin into the scene. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slice away the rest of his body so we just remain with his head. And this is probably really gonna piss off some of the goblins out there. And once we do that, we're gonna position it in our square. Now, the one thing I like doing is on the square, changing the opacity. That way I can see exactly where the goblin head is going to uh, fit and what our reverse mold is gonna look like. Once I'm happy with that, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna turn the goblin to invisible and I'm going to uh, have the box visible, and then I'm just gonna do a box or remesh, and what I'm left with is basically a negative imprint of the goblin. And that's how we make our mold. Now I'm just gonna throw it in our slicer. We're gonna do our little small test print um, to make sure our mold works correctly. I saw there was a lot of wasted space around the goblin's head, so I just readjusted how big the square was and just repeated the process over again. So we have our miniature mold. I don't think I need the mold release in here. I'm just gonna put in some of this Crayola model magic clay to make sure I don't have any issues. As you can see, some of it, like his nose, is really deep. So I'm gonna make sure I get pull the mold out before I do this in the bigger mold with rubber. Now this is air dry clay. We're not gonna need a whole lot of it um, in here because we just wanna make sure, just gonna make sure sun's getting deep into his nose. And I'll show you guys up close what I've done. In the mold itself, we just shoved in all that uh, clay. So if we can't get this out, we may need to split this into pieces where we put it together, shove our clay in and take it apart. But let's see what happens. Let's let it dry for a little bit. So we put in our clay and we let this test mold dry overnight. Um, I've been wiggling it with my finger a little and it doesn't seem like it's really cured, but let's try to get this out real quick. Let's try an X-Acto knife. Let's see if we can slide it in there and pry this out. I'm sort of regretting not using that mold release. I don't think the clay is quite dry enough. Okay, this is worrying me. It's a little stuck in there, but I'm not sure. Unfortunately, if the clay is dry enough. Um, let's try one of these dental tools. Maybe we get a little deeper around the edges without losing, without ruining the model. Unfortunately, it looks like the clay is still wet in there. I'm not having not feeling too good about this right now. So I'm wondering if our big mold is gonna have the same release issue. Obviously, I'm gonna use a mold release. Um, 
yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually do something different. I am going to also print uh, a version that comes apart. So let me knock that out real quick because this isn't giving me too much hope. But we are gonna let this dry a little more. So let's look at how to actually make a two-part mold real quick. So because I wasn't sure if the mold was gonna work as one solid piece inside of Bamboo Lab Studio, I actually. Uh, cut my mold in half using the cut tool and I added two uh, keys and cuts in there so I could actually pin the mold back together and then I just sliced that and I sent that off to my printer also because I wasn't a hundred percent confident that my mold would work uh, as one solid piece and to be able to get it out after my failed clay version. Like I said, this is my first time, so you are learning with me, or maybe you've done this before, and you probably could have gave me some better advice than I uh, have for myself. So I made my mold. It is now two parts. I put in a couple of keys and cuts, so these parts will go together, and then um, we'll be able to pour our dragon skin or our rubber in there. So let's just get these together real quick. Make sure they are nice and tight. I do see a little gapping. So what I am gonna do with this one, I'm gonna clamp this together before we start putting our uh, resin in there, but there you go. We're gonna mix up our dragon skin and we're gonna lay them in the molds and we're gonna see actually now which one works better. The one where we pour it in solid or the one where we have two pieces. Let's get our two uh, molds set up. First we have our solid one and now we have our other one. I am gonna put a couple of clamps on this just to make sure it stays tight. I mean, I could have probably glued it together, but why waste glue when we have clamps? Put one at the top and one at the bottom. Okay. Don't want to put too much pressure on this. Yeah, it looks... Now, I can't really lift this, but now I can't really see any light through it. A little bit, but not enough where I'm worried. So first we're gonna use some mold release because we we'll learned from our small mold and I'm still trying to dry out the clay. It is, it is not coming out of the mold. So we're gonna spray the inside of the mold, let it dry and then do a second coat. And now we're gonna let that sit for about two minutes and let it dry. Now we're gonna give it another two minutes and then we're gonna pour our dragon skin tan right into our molds. Well, we're actually going to paint it on the inside because we don't want to fill this because that would actually take a lot of, of the rubber from the dragon skin. So we're going to paint it on the inside. Now, bear with me, bear with me. I know I said this at the beginning of the video, but this is the first time I am pouring a mold off a 3D print. And I usually cast resin, not things like rubber. So this is new for me. So Bear with me on this one. Okay, so we're gonna take our dragon skin 10, our part A and part B, and we are going to mix even parts together in one of our cups. Um, now, one of the important things with dragon skin is you can't use latex gloves. Um, it actually, you use vinyl. I think it has to do with something with the way the product uh, cures or something. It may like inhibit it. But I'm not sure, so we're using some vinyl gloves. Now, one of the best ways to measure resin or rubber, anything that's a part A and part B, these are 50% of each one, okay? So anytime you do that, the best way to do it is to actually weigh it. So we're gonna actually weigh this and make sure we have equal parts. Okay, we got equal parts A and B, and now we're just going to mix them for three minutes. Three minutes is up. Three minutes is up. Now we're going to take our brush, and we're gonna brush this into our mold. Okay, 
We're gonna let this set for a little bit and then we're gonna add a little bit more into our molds. But unfortunately, this is the medium. So this one takes about five hours to cure. We're gonna let it set for a little bit and then we're gonna do a little bit more of this uh, rubber of the dragon skin inside the molds and we'll give it a few hours and demold them and see what happens. I'm gonna say this once again, this is my first time doing this, so let's see how we go. So we left these overnight and the dragon skin tan has cured completely, which looks really, really nice. The only question is which one are we gonna demold first? Let's take the clamps off the two piece mold. So we have our full piece and we have our two piece. I'm not sure which one I wanna start with. Um, let's demold the one piece one first. I'm trying to go really, really slow as it's thin up near these upper walls. I think the nose is gonna be the hardest part. Oh. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that. That is from... That is from the One Piece mold. How awesome does that look? Now let's do the Two Piece mold. So much easier to come out. That one demolded so much quicker once I got the pieces apart. The biggest difference with this one is as you can see, some of the rubber, some of the dragon skin came through. They both came out really, really nice, better than I expected. The one from the one piece mold has a lot less cleanup. It took a lot more to get it out. The one from the two piece mold has these additional little pieces, these seams that need to be cut off. But both I am super pleased with. I'm really happy with the way Dragon Skin worked. Uh, it worked beautifully. I'm happy I used the mold release. Um, I think it helped with getting out, especially on the one-piece mold. Should I actually try to put one of these on? How's it look? Do I look like a goblin? The goblin council is really going to be pissed off about this one. You dare defy us. We will tear you apart. We just really need some eye slits and some mouth slits or breathing holes and... This thing would be golden. Well, it's official. We took our 3D model of our goblin. We made a 3D printed mold. We poured in some dragon skin tan, and we wind up making these really cool uh, goblin masks. And somehow I didn't glue myself to the workbench or mess them up. But I'm still not sure about the small one we made with clay. Is it creepy? Yes. Is it wearable? Yes with a couple of eye holes and some uh, breathing holes in the nose and the mouth. Should it exist? Well, I guess that's between me and the High Goblin Council. But that's exactly what I love about making, creating a 3D model, turning it into something real, squishy, and deeply unsettling. As far as the clay goes, it's still not fully dry. Um, I tried popping it out again. You can see the clay is still a little bit wet. So that's going to have to be for a future video. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe button because next time we may paint it, add some ears or some hair, or maybe inadvertently summon something. For more on 3D printing, 3D modeling, DIY or maker projects, make sure you like and follow Maker Build It. And remember, keep on making. <laughs>